Welcome to Research Business Daily Report, where market researchers come for news, insights, and commentary about their field, collecting information, bits, and knowledge that impacts them both inside and outside their current place of work. On RBDR today, part one of a two-part discussion on a subject of utmost importance. It's about the quality of research, specifically the lack of projectability of research. RBDR is sponsored today and this week by Bershik Research and Consulting, unlocking success. Bershik helps executives obtain uniquely rich and accurate market feedback to present package, position, price, and market brands, products, and services for maximum market appeal and adoption. Bershik Research will be staging a webinar in February that you won't want to miss it. We'll give you details about it at the end of today's RBDR. Brad Bortner is a senior development consultant for Verizon, but previously he was a VP of Market Insight at Forrester Research, a VP at Comscore, and managing director of the U.S. division of Sensodium. And he's seen enough in dealings with research vendors and research clients since the early 2000s to know that key research methods that everyone in the business is using are simply not projectable. Many, many research agencies may not be delving deeply enough into the existence of a projectability problem, and clients appear not to be adequately informed that the issue actually exists. Brad intensively reviewed the situation with us. Is projectability a, a problem that cannot be fixed, or exactly what is going on with it? Well, there are, there are multiple things going on. I think, you know, it it can be fixed. I think the challenge is um, uh, two, twofold. One is we've had changing modes. So people have moved to online modalities. And, and we'll talk about the polling miss that happened, you know, in a bit. And the second is people have forgotten what that means. And by people, I don't mean all researchers. I mean, there, there are some very good uh, analytical people out there. But I think um, a lot of researchers have sort of grown up with this at this point, um, you know, where online panels are the way to go. And a lot of clients just don't know. So they assume that data they're getting is projectable to a market. So you're asking them to research the catch up market or, the, you know, some new technology product. You just say, here's the percentages. And they say, great, we're good to go. Um, and they don't know that, you know, the final steps haven't been made to weight the data appropriately and make sure it's projectable to a market. Um, you know, so so things have gotten harder, you know, because online panels are inherently a different cat than, you know, the old phone random survey through phone uh, tech, you know, random digit dial stuff used to be. Um, but, you know, it's it's a solvable problem, but people need to know it's a problem in order to want to solve it and pay for it or else, you know, don't ask, don't tell. I think that um, there, there are a couple of challenges with market research in general in this regard, which is. Um, people don't know that the data they're getting isn't projectable, but also um, it's very hard for people to retrospectively go back and say, hey, that, was, that, that study was off. You know? So basically, you, you'll do a big market research project and you're doing a segmentation or you're trying to figure out you know, through a customer choice model how uh, you know, avidly people will like your product. And you go to market and they like it. You know, they might like it a little better or a little worse. And um, you, you may give no thought to, well, was the market research off? Because it's only one input into all the decisions that get made around the product being optimized and how it's marketed. And, you know, so if you miss by 20 points, you know, the market research guys could say, hey, you know, you, you messed up your marketing. It's not our fault. We sized it properly. You know, so there's not a lot of accountability. There's not a lot of people going back and saying, how good was that study? Would we have made a decision that was just as good without market research? You know, no one, no one's, you know, some companies do market research, some don't, but it's rare that you'd have the same decision being made in a controlled way to see what, what drives a better decision. Okay. Uh, the cynic out there would probably ask you what I'm about to ask, which is how the heck do you know there's a projectability problem? The clients aren't asking and therefore they're not willing to pay because they're assuming. They're assuming when you give them an estimate, it's a valid estimate of the market they're interested in. And on the, on the supply side, there are people who are definitely smart enough to know about this and are trying to do some work on it. But there's also entire generations of younger researchers who've grown up with, you know, online panels are kind of the way to go. Um, and, and effectively they are. But they, they've forgotten the bargain that was made and that, 
they're not the same thing and the statistics don't work the same way. And you've got to really do a lift to make sure that, you know, it works appropriately. Um, you know, so this, it all comes down to, to simplify things to a matter of how sophisticated is your weighting, no matter what you're doing. If you're doing phone, because phone is, is torching at this point also, um, or if you're doing online, or if you're doing ball intercepts, you know, you need to know, well, how do I weight this data? You know, and what, what occurred to me when I saw the huge polling misses um, that just happened in the past election, I mean, not nationally. Well, it's been going on around the world for the last Oh, yeah, years, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So, so, the ch so it occurred to me that, you know, even if you're trying to wait, and the people who do polls, they're trying really hard to know what turnout models are going to be like, and they, they just missed it. Um, and the challenge is uh, these weighting models are very dependent upon the idea that, you know, a past – past behavior is, is predictive of future behavior, right? So, so if something radical is happening, your weighting model is going to be way off. And the same thing is true with, with any product. You know, if needs are changing radically, if, uh, if um, you know, some dynamic has happened that's made something very popular. I mean, if you, even if you go way back to, like, the Edsel, which people forget, the Edsel was, like, one of the most market-researched cars ever at the time. And they thought they had it nailed. And then people stopped liking Chrome. Between when that study was done <laughs> and the car came out, they missed it because taste had changed. So the weeding was totally off and, and it died on the vine. And I know this because uh, Assembly Square uh, in Somerville, which is where I live, is where they manufactured the Edsel just down the street. <laughs> it's now a mall. But, you know, so, so that's near and dear to my heart. We'll be presenting more from Brad on tomorrow's RBDR. That's your Research Business Daily Report, which has been sponsored today and is this week by Bershik Research and Consulting, Unlocking Success. Bershik helps executives obtain uniquely rich and accurate market feedback to present, package, position, price, and market brands, products, and services for maximum market appeal and adoption. Now, we've got a very brief message for you from John Bershik about a free February webinar it spells out keys to customer-centric success. You won't want to miss that webinar, so just take a listen to his message. Nearly every company today says they care about their customers, that they listen, that their ultimate goal is to be customer-centric. Yet who is really doing this? Research tells us that up to 80% of all customer intelligence initiatives fail to meet their objectives. Yet there is one company who actually does this, and their name is Amazon. What makes Amazon so different? From our latest research, Amazon is achieving what we call customer intelligence maturity. In fact, they have earned the right to be called the customer intelligence maturity gold standard. If you want to see more about our newest research on how Amazon is achieving this compared to 26 other leading brands, join our webinar in February called Are You Keeping Up or Falling Short? to learn all about it. That's February 22nd. That's a Wednesday. It's at 10 a.m. Pacific Coast time, 1 o'clock East Coast time, and we'll send out more information if you sign up for that. Now, you can look for the link to that webinar in our email to subscribers, and of course, it's in the description box underneath today's video. We hope you have a great research day, and that we'll see you back here tomorrow.